right, Rickster's here, back with a, another different game, XCOM 2. One of the, in my opinion, better turn-based sci-fi dystopia shooter game that is basically a high-stakes, fast-paced in terms of content delivery game that you're allowed to build, manage, and fight a group of human soldiers that are trying to reclaim Earth after the enemy faction Advent has taken over planet Earth. So on this episode, I'm going to just do an Iron Man veteran difficulty XCOM 2 experience. I will be skipping the tutorial or whatever the tutorial starts you out with and go from there. And this is the last screen that it will show before it starts. It can do without Iron Man, but I'm going to try an Iron Man run. So basically, what this means is every turn is saved. So if you mess up, you can't go back. It blocks you from reloading unless if you want to start from pretty much almost the beginning of that mission. Kind of safe. I'm also going to be skipping most of the cutscenes because it's been shown so many times in this very popular game. I mean, they are good and they're very somatic and stuff, but when you see it so many times, it kind of gets old after a while. But it's not a bad thing, it's just once you've seen it, it's pretty much the same thing, just with different soldiers and buildings. So, what is the goal of XCOM? Well, the goal of XCOM is to maneuver with your mouse and keyboards and take turns. That's pretty much what it boils down to. That's the whole point of turn-based strategy games. This is a heavy combat game, so there is quite a lot of stuff you can do. Right now where it's what's called ambush mode. Let me press tab here. Let's select Charles Taylor. So these are randomly generated characters that you can rename and change their appearance later on. Not right at the start, of course. What I'm doing with the Q and E keys on the keyboard is rotating the camera. And using the mouse to look around and see what to do. I think the best option for Taylor is to actually go down the high ground. Yes, I know, Obi-Wan Kenobi fans are going to be upset about this, but sometimes you do have to give up the high ground in order to advance. So, this square right here where my mouse is hovering over, if I right-click that, that tells him to move. To here. Now he has one other action remaining. That's what the little chevron means. It's a little pointy arrow where the mouse is hovering over. The blue shield means he's under a form of cover. I think this is in its fold that's full cover, so you get maximum defensive bonus, but your chance of hitting the target is reduced at certain angles. And this game has a lot of RNG. It's all about angle and positioning. There's three options we can do. We can hunker down, which is rarely used for non-civilians. Overwatch, which is you know, heavily used. And the frag grenade that you can throw. Well, obviously we don't see anybody, so we're just going to do Overwatch here. And then it tells you to confirm that, so Overwatch. you just left click that again. So, the next character. This character particularly is named ah, Chase Campbell. We're going to move Chase Campbell to here on the high ground. And we could sprint him to a further point, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put him on this half cover right here. These guys make up the and bulk that's of the central. That is your... With. CO or boss but their obedience makes them predictable. is one of your allies. Virtually every human in this game is your ally. Anybody that's not a human is not your ally. He's part of command and control, and it's the reason why you, the commander, are even around. It's because they captured your body and put in a stasis tube for decades, and they launched a rescue operation to save you. That's basically the story lore in a nutshell for the beginning. I actually got pretty far in this game 
about a year or two ago, so a lot of this lore is pretty much familiar. But it's nice to record and try this out. Closing on target position now. We'll just move him up here. This is Geoff Andrews. I'm going to move him up just a little bit further. Now one thing you want to avoid doing in XCOM is to put your soldiers too close together. Like eventually later on in the game, if you huddle them closer to this together, they have really powerful enemies that can basically wipe out a squad in less than two hits, even with good armor, with their nasty frag grenades. Now for this last character, who is Carl Parker, we're going to move him up to a full cover option right here. Oh, oops. I can't pronounce names. Worth, worth a thing. Alright, so if I press the tab key here, you can cycle between soldiers. So let's see here. The furthest one up is Carl Parker. She's going to move to... Hmm... Now you got to be careful when you move characters. You see these red squares right here. If you move or even sprint anywhere near that square, like if I were to right click there, I'd lose the surprise or ambush, which is a very powerful tool in this game. Having ambush is critical for success. So I have to move her closer. So I'm going to move her here. Now if I did this right, which I did, and then of course Central is going to say that. Since I did it correctly and moved dynamically across that square, she does not get detected. Definitely want to do Overwatch though. Covering now. And also, when you're in ambush, you get a higher roll chance to hit when you mouse over these red looking hood figures on the bottom middle of your screen. That's the shot percentage if you take the shot right now, but I'm not going to trigger that yet. Overwatch. Because I want to move Charles Taylor closer to the front. And do Overwatch here. He has a lower chance to hit because of his angle. Since he's trying to shoot over this cover and is trying to aim down an alleyway, that reduces your chance of hitting. So for this character, now that everybody's in position and double checking by pressing tab, I can now fire the weapon. So I'm going to aim for the furthest one away because he's going to be the hardest to hit. And as you can see right here on the left side of your screen, you see hit, which is determined percentage, aim, and height. The more trained your soldier is, that aim percentage goes up and also is modified by a lot of modifiers too. You can modify these weapons to make them better and stronger over time. It just takes a while. Also, if you notice towards the right, if you close that out, you can also put that in and out with the left click here. If you don't want more details, but always like all details. 40% critical chance, so that means we are flanking him and have a 40% chance to do even more damage. Or instead of rolling like say a 3, you can roll a 5 or more. Usually it's about 1 or 2 damage points more is the case. And then you hit fire weapon. And it'll start this whole chain. There we go. Now we are spotted. So we lose the element of surprise. And we see there's promotion earned being spotted here. So it's now pointing for the cycles. So one of these people will be promoted. There we go. He's taken down. And he's taken down. That's how you execute a perfect ambush. Now I put this game enough to do that on a frequent basis for at least the first mission or two. Because the pattern's almost pretty much the same, just depends on your difficulty. And I've always played on that difficulty, not higher. Good copy. Moving on target. Okay, well after that successful takedown. We have Chase Taylor move to here. And let's see your Carl Parker move her up to here. Moving to designated position. Under heavy cover. Yep. The so, more than the I did this mission many sure times, so I know there's one last wave. It's always the same wave, just depends on the difficulty. 
Okay, well, he has the high ground, but he's out of range, so I have to actually drop him down. I'm going to sprint him. Let's see here. Where can I sprint him? I'm going to sprint him to this hard cover right here. That way I have three soldiers on the ground there. And this guy will keep... We'll keep them on Overwatch over here. Overwatch. And let's see here, it's a 45% chance. Can I throw a frag grenade? No, I cannot throw it that far, so we'll Overwatch him. Parker, I think, can throw a frag grenade. Yes. So, the frag grenade mechanic. When you left click on the frag grenade, you get this interactive window that shows these orange bars that are groups of squares, which you can upgrade or change out as you progress through the game. One way to cheese the game just a little bit is manipulating with your mouse to here. If it latches onto something right here, you could go, oh, well look at that. That grenade will still deal damage to the enemy, and not only that, half cover usually, not always, but usually can have one of a couple of things happen. For example, this pole will fall down and he loses cover. So that will make the AI panic, or in this case, advent. Sorry, the enemy advent panic, and they'll move to a different spot. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you can get these guys to cluster just enough that you can hit more than one at a time. But it does cost a turn. So, be careful when you do this. And this is the last soldier, too. And usually, if you want to be really efficient, you have all the soldiers on Overwatch or in position, so that when that soldier panics, you're in a better position to take advantage of the other position. So you can position him while position and do an exhibit meme all over again. Fire in the hole! This should probably knock him out completely, like KO it. Yep. And be careful too, sometimes you can cause fires that if you run through or walk through that, you'll actually hurt yourself. Uh oh. That's the commander, so the advent commander can mark targets for better accuracy. So even under full cover, occasionally can hit you under full cover depending on their position, when you're marked. There's a couple of ways of getting rid of that. Oh, a somatic. There we go, the Overwatch smitch, missed stuff, which I kind of half expected. Negative damage. Wow. I'm all right. I mean, I lucked out there. I mean, I'm playing one step above, like, the easiest difficulty. And you might type in your keyboard going, Briggs, that's too easy. I have 4,000 hours. And you should play the hardest difficulty on Iron Man, not the one step below easiest. Now, trust me, if you play this game long enough or you play it that many hours, it it is actually hard. It may look as simple and easy, but this is because I've done this one so many times that even if there's all the variables it does, it's still, within reason, easy mission. Now, this guy, I'm going to move him up. Geoff Andrews. I'm going to actually move him up because he's not in range of anybody. Rolling. So I'm going to actually move him to this hardcover. Right there. And then press and tab the cycle here. Parker is marked. Campbell cannot really move because I believe they are in Overwatch. With that target on their head, that usually means they're in Overwatch position. So if I move anywhere near here, they can have a chance of shooting at him. So let's see if I can do anything about that. That's Geoff. So he has a shot there. I don't really want to cluster him to get her. So I'm going to move him from full cover to half cover. Understood. Moving out. Okay. So he's moved up a bit. Let's see if we can do what's fire weapons chances here. 53. 47. Okay, let's see if frag grenade here. Let's take out this half cover and knock out another... Enemy this troop with a grenade. Because why not? Cheese it. <laughs> there you go. It's very simple. Throw a grenade, win. <laughs> you have to fight really unfair in this game. So trust me, this game is brutal on the difficulty as you play along. So doing stuff like that might seem cheesy and chintzy. But it is a valid tactic in this game. Uh, I'm going to move Mr. Campbell up. And, you know, just do something called throw yet another grenade, just to cheese him again. Oh, he glitched through. <laughs> what? What? 
What kind of a glitch is that with the character model? He, he just like Matrix glitched through the base of the area I need to blow up for an mission to succeed. He just chucks a grenade through, phases through the wall, and it damages him. Ah, uh, yes. Occasionally you get to see stuff like that in this game. It's not very often, though. That's a 45% chance to hit. Yeah, might as well do an Overwatch. And Overwatch for Carl Parker. There we go. Miss. See if this hits. Yeah, there we go. I'll get him next time. Nailed him. All right, the officer's down. The, area is the mark is removed. We're not picking up any inbound contacts. Scanners are clear. Minus one Perfect. Five, oh no, I lost the loot. Whoops. Responds. We need to get those charges planted on the double. Yeah, that's okay. It, there's no timer or doom timer. XCOM 2 relies a lot on doom timers to pressure you to be aggressive or at least get moving. So you're not just constantly overwatching the whole time. But in the X4 is the basically shaped charge thing. And then we'll end this mission. Menace one five. Rendezvous at the extraction point. Yep. And they all survived. I don't think anyone actually Status took damage, which is, is a good clear. thing. Detonating charges. Yep. And you get to see the evil statue get taken down. Yeah, no wounded. So that's good. That's a perfect run when you have no wounded and ideally none of them killed. And this rating thing is just for swag. You don't really have to worry about the rating thing. You just want to, to have mission complete. Ideally, not killed, and certainly not wounded if you can help it. It happens though, soldiers do get wounded in this game. That's just the way it is. And here's some e stats. Which is kind of ironic that I have... <laughs> successful shot percentage. Yeah, I hit all the targets because it just threw grenades that do guaranteed damage. Oh my god. You gotta love it. I mean, it is a nice little touch they do. And they do dealt most damage, made most attacks, most under fire. Mood furthest kind of stuff. It, it's a neat little touch to the game if you wanted to monitor that kind of stuff. Another heroic effort in the field. And here's the after action report. After skipping some cutscenes, they get uh, corpse. <laughs> yeah, you get their corpse, and you can do stuff with them. Luckily, nothing like too weird. It's just a commodity. And then, Commander well, to the research labs. then you get to learn the lore reasons for research and armory. We go to research here. I skipped that cutscene because pretty much a lot of people have seen it. It's not bad or anything. The writing in this game is actually pretty good. <clears throat> it's not like Damon X Machina. <clears throat> and actually, lore-wise, usually it flows pretty good. So, if you want to read lore and stuff, or have really good voice acting say stuff, th this game's pretty good on that. I gotta admit. Uh, for research, watch your weapons is critical. Do that first. Uh, hybrid materials second. Biotech third, if you don't have anything else to research in that order. And the reason why you want modular weapons is because you want to be able to modify the rifles and also be able to do more modifications. That's the name. I do find that area of research. And then the engineers the where you build intrigued. stuff, obviously. And you can do armory. Dad sacrificed the only thing he had left to get the soldiers. The ground. You can promote the rookies to a class. She now they're random. In this I case, in I think it cost a game glitch. Oh no, I didn't. It's just in Yeah, I know, blah blah blah. Okay, so... Until you build a building that allows you to specialize training, the, when the rookies go from rookie to squatty, that's like the very first level, they get a random chance of being, like say, a specialist, which is support role. They can do all sorts of neat stuff. Uh, this is Ranger, they're Scouts, they're like Colson class, they're Stealthy, they get a cool sword, they can slash and hack a slash. And basically you have a shotgun that does really good damage, but you have to be pretty close for it to work. Of course the sniper. Just like it's... Snipers are situational, they are very useful, but you have to have support class to spot for them. You can make them actually a pistol ear, which basically means, <laughs> I call it pistol ear, but... It's basically, you can make them from a sn traditional sniper to being more aggressive, shorter range sniper that can 
fire multiple times per turn, which is actually pretty cool if you do it right, but holy smokes, it's a difficult. It's easier to do the traditional sniper tree, but it is there. My favorite quest in the game, the Gr Grandadier. They're not always the most commonly used quests, but they are the most fun in my opinion, because basically it's big hefty machine cannon or machine gun and it's short ranged with lots of AOE or area of effect roll where you can deal massive damage and shred armor. They are not very good at ranged fighting and they have the least mobility so they don't move very far but man do they do a lot of damage. And Specialist is my second favorite class I like to use in this game because they can hack and or do aid protocol which boosts defense and also you can do a medic roll too so you can heal up characters and they usually have a well balanced assault rifle that's in between the shotgun LL to holy smoke so you can actually hit that far kind of weapon. So what's another thing now to the this actual engineering. Started, Commander. It can build items be surprised how big of a difference some of these such as med kit, commander. smoke grenade, and flashbang. Supplies, I can manufacture anything we need in yep. no time. Which is nice. It, I like that touch of this game. It they allow you to do a very brief, nice, flowing explanation. <clears throat> Damon next machine to take notes here. So it's nice. And it has some little lore reasons and also gives you hints of how to use them. The med kit is a very important weapon, not weapon, but support tool. You usually want to put them on the specialists because they can use the drone to help soldiers from afar than having to physically run over and hit the button. Flashbang grenade is very useful. It's a very wide area effect though, so be careful not to hit your own soldiers when using it. It basically disorients and disrupts what they're doing. Smoke grenade is a little risky. It is a useful support grenade, but you have to be careful because the enemy can use it as well. I usually prefer the flashbang for that reason. Alright, so that is it for the first mission of XCOM 2 on Iron Man. The next episode will continue the journey of doing a very complex turn-based game. And eventually, when we get engineers, we can start delving into removing well, aliens and all that. getting this ship up and running, which was mostly Doctor Shen's work, I oh. felt particularly useful. In Occasionally, when you idle, they'll have I'm people more than blab. Happy to leave the hard decisions to the commander. So, occasionally they'll blab if you idle the game. It's kind of a neat touch they do every once in a while. So, I'm also run a Ko-Fi page if you wish to support the channel. And still getting trying to get that flight stick. I'm not sure if I ever will, but hey, who knows? Maybe in the future, maybe not. This is Rickster's Journey, signing off.